Hello everyone and welcome to the Out of Sharp channel on YouTube. In this video I'm going to show you that how you can capture pictures, photos from your camera as well as a photo library using Surf UI. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Well the first thing we need to do is we need to create some sort of an interface. You can see that this is our interface right now. It displays hello world. Well, let's start with creating a navigation view. And the reason we are creating a navigation view is so that we can display our image picker controller. Let's go ahead and put V stack in the navigation view, vertical stack. And I'm going to go ahead and display hello world so that it at least compiles. The navigation view right now doesn't really have any title. We can set that title. So I can say navigation title. Uh, I can say camera demo. All right. And we are going to also see how we can actually pick up the picture from the photo library. But let's start with the camera. Okay, so we have the text. We don't really care that much about the text. So what we want to do is we want to display a some sort of a placeholder. Now, one thing you will notice is that we don't really have anything called placeholder. So let me go ahead and find the placeholder and we will go ahead and check out the assets and simply go ahead and drop the placeholder image. This can be any image. So I just downloaded some image. You can use any image you want. Let's go ahead and resume it. Okay, so we have the placeholder image. It is displaying. I think it's way too big in size. So let's go ahead and first of all, make it resizable. Here we go. And I can all go ahead and give some sort of a width to the frame. So width, it can be, let's say 300. And height, I can say 300 also. All right, great. Now I can go ahead and create some sort of a button that will allow us to choose a picture. So I'm currently inside of VStack. I can go ahead and create a button. I can say choose picture over here. And it will do something. There we go. So we have that particular choose picture. So when you click on choose picture, which is basically this particular button right over here, what will happen is that we should see some sort of an action sheet telling us that, well, do you want to select the picture from a photo library or a camera? So let's go ahead and give a little bit of padding first to that particular button. And for some reason, uh, when we give the padding to the button, the navigation view title is gone. Let's go ahead and run it to see if the navigation view title comes back or not. I don't think I did anything wrong over here by giving like a padding to the button. Okay, so it comes back. There we go. So it's like a glitch in uh, your Xcode preview. Okay. The other thing we want to do is we want to put action sheet. So we are just creating action sheet over here and it has a function which takes in is presented. If that value is actually true, then the content or basically the action sheet is going to show up, else it's not going to show up. So what we're going to do is we need to create some sort of a state variable which is going to either show us the action sheet or hide the action sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a state private var show sheet and then it will be a boolean and the value will be false. When we click the button, we will go ahead and make sure that the show sheet is true. Basically show the action sheet, telling the user that you have multiple options. You can select the picture from the photo library or you can select the picture from the camera. All right, so it's presented. Now we can actually go ahead and pass in the dollar sign show sheet and some sort of a content. So some content is gonna come right over here. I don't know why it is complaining right now over here. Let's see what we are doing wrong. Uh, is presented. Okay, so we need to have something over here uh, and we are not passing anything. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the action sheet. I'm going to create an action sheet and this particular action sheet is, you can see it's a lot of stuff going on over here. Uh, and it's formatted really badly. So let's go ahead and first select everything. 
and try to organize it. Okay, so forget about these things. What this will do at least is going to create an action sheet. And you can see that the action sheet we are creating is saying selecting a photo. And when you click on choose, uh, the message will be choose. It will show you the photo library or it will show you the camera, that these are the options. So let's go ahead and see if it actually works or not. I'm gonna go ahead and run the application. When I click on choose picture, this is our action sheet, it shows up. And I can select the camera and it goes away. I can select photo library, it goes away. I can select cancel and obviously it goes away. But it doesn't really do anything if I select any of these things. So now what we want to do is when you select any of these things, we want to open up the image picker or some sort of a sheet, not an action sheet, but kind of like a modal which is showing an uh, image picker, all right? So in order to do that, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and create a property and I will call, and I don't really like this approach. I'm gonna show you what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna say show image picker and I'm gonna go ahead and say Boolean equals to false. And the other thing that we need to set up is, well, do you want to display the, or show the camera or do you want to display the photo library? So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass in the state, private var source type. And this particular source type will be a UI image picker controller dot source type. And by default, I'm just gonna select camera. Okay, now let's go back over here. And this is an approach that I don't like. And if you have any recommendation, you can tell me because I have to go ahead and set show image picker to true over here, but I also have to make sure that show image picker is actually true. If I don't set it to true, then eventually you will see that I will be using some sort of a action sheet, so which we can actually use it over here, sheet. And you can see that I need to pass in right over here. So I'm gonna pass in show image picker. And for the content, this will be the actual content that will be displayed in the, uh, in the action sheet. Well, not the action sheet, in the modal. All right, so I can just say modal over here for now. The other thing that I want to do is when the person selects a photo library, I want to go ahead and set the source type to photo library. So self dot source type equals to photo library. And the other one we need to do is when we say source type over here, that will be the default, which is the camera, okay? Now the question is then how can we display anything related to the photo library or the camera? Well, you will have to use something called a UI view controller representable. And what that is going to allow you to do is that it will allow your image picker con controller, which is already part of the UI kit framework, to be available in Surf UI. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new, nope, not that one. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file. And so far is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is the image picker. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and add that. It doesn't really have anything right now. You can see that. So let's first go ahead and import surf UI. We're gonna go ahead and start with a struct and this will be a image picker and it will be conforming to UI view controller representable, this one, okay? And now we have to implement a couple of different functions. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to provide a type alias for a type, which is UI view controller type. And the controller type we are representing is UI image picker controller. Great. We also do need to provide a coordinator, which is going to coordinate that part, all the particular events that are coming from the UI image picker controller delegate, but we're gonna do that later. That's, so over here, we will have to declare the coordinator to do, all right? Okay, so what is this image picker all about? Well, this image picker will be responsible 
for delegating the task to the coordinator and the coordinator is actually going to do the work and give you the image. But this image picker, you should be able to use it over here in your content view, right over here, all right? And what's gonna happen is that in your content view, you will create some properties. So let me go ahead and create a property for image. So I can say over here, uh, state private var image, which is of type UI image. So what's gonna happen is that we have a UI image over here or an image over here at least, but it's nothing, it's not really populated and we want to populate this particular image. So what's gonna happen is that we are going to create the image picker, which we are creating right now. It's gonna take in that image as a bindable object and then populate that image. And once it gets populated, since it is a bindable image, we can actually use it right over here. Okay, so the first task for us is to create some sort of an image, the binding var image, and we will say UI image. There we go, all right. And next up, we can go ahead and create the source type. So var source type, which will be a UI image picker controller dot source type. And once again, we're gonna default it to the camera. Now there are a couple of functions that we need to implement. The first one is a make UI view controller. And we will need to, first let's close this. I don't think we're gonna use a canvas in this file. So we will need to make sure that we are returning the correct type. So context is UI view controller representable context. And it is returning the UI image picker controller because that's the thing that we are returning on line number 14. So let's go ahead and first create a picker. So picker, picker equals to UI image picker controller. So we are going to create an instance of that and picker dot source type equals to source type so that we know that if you are trying to pick it up from the photo library or you're trying to use a camera, we also need to set the delegate equals to something over here. So we don't really have a coordinator, but it will be a coordinator. And then finally, we will go ahead and return the picker. So we still have to implement the coordinator, which we don't have, all right? The other function that we need to implement is called the update UI view controller. This is if your UI uh, image picker is changing, but it's not changing. So we're just gonna do it like that, make it empty. And the final one, let's remove this empty space. The final one is the make coordinator. And this is going to return you, I'm not sure why it wrote it like that. It looks kind of weird, but it is going to return you the image picker, image picker dot coordinator, which by the way, we don't have. So let's go ahead and create our coordinator. All right, so coordinator is a person who is going to be helping us with the different delegate functions provided by the UI image picker controller delegate. And it's a long, long stuff, right? So let's go ahead and create a class. So we're gonna create a class, we'll call it image picker coordinator. It will be inheriting from NS object. It will be using the UI navigation controller delegate, and it will be using UI image picker controller delegate. All right, so what do we have to do for the coordinator? The coordinator is also going to take in the image, all right, the one image that we were taking it over here right now, there we go. Uh, where are we? Okay, here we go. And we also need to take the source type so that they will know that what we are doing. Although, I don't know if we are actually even using the source type. So we will even use the source type. So let's leave it for now. And if we are using it, we're gonna show it later. All right, let's go ahead and create the initialization function, which is going to take in the image, which is a 
bindable image of type UI image. There we go. We are not really passing source type, so that might be it. And we'll say underscore image equals to image, which is a private property automatically created for this particular image. Okay, great. Now, if you have been doing UI kit development, you know that there are functions when you are using the UI image picker controller delegate. And one of those important function is did finish picking media from info. All right, so let's first go ahead and get the image. So we're gonna say UI image equals to info. And we are gonna pass in the UI image picker controller dot info key dot original image and we are going to cast it to a ui image now this is not good you shouldn't be doing that uh, we can go ahead and do it kind of like this which means that it is going to return a nullable object and we can go ahead and unwrap it where are we there we go and then finally we can assign the image equals to ui image we also want to close, and you're gonna see, when we run this, you're gonna see that there is a problem with that, all right? Okay, let's go jump into the image picker and we still need to return our coordinator. Right now we don't have anything, so return a image picker coordinator, the, the one we just created, and we are going to pass in the image, which is the image as a bindable image. Let's go ahead and build it first and see it failing, awesome. Okay, so what exactly is going on over here? Um, we are not returning anything from our coordinator, obviously. So we need to make sure that we are doing something. Okay, so what's going on over here? Unexpected non-void. Okay, let's check it out. All right, so the problem is with line number 34, we said we're gonna come back and implement the coordinator. We never did. So let's go ahead and implement that. Type alias uh, coordinator, and the coordinator is of type image picker coordinator. Let's go ahead and build it now. Hopefully it will succeed this time. And there we go. Okay, great. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if, how we can actually use our new creation. Let's go back to our content view. And right now, if we use the content view, actually we should actually run it and see. So let me go ahead and run it. Sometimes what you are gonna see that if you're trying to run this um, on your Xcode previews, then it might obviously not work when you're actually looking at the camera. Uh, let's go ahead and actually run it on a simulator and see if it uh, allows us to at least show the model. We, we are not even displaying our image picker right now. We're just trying to display the model. So let's go ahead and click on choose picture. And we're gonna click on photo library. Okay, so it does show the model, so that's good. But we don't really care that much about the model. We want to show the image picker we just created. So I'm gonna use the image picker instead of the model, the one that we just created. Now we do need to pass in a couple of different things. Uh, we do need to pass in the image, which is a bindable thing, so we can pass in the image, and we need to pass in the source type. So I believe we already have the source type. We can simply say source type. All right, let's go ahead and build it again. Okay, so we have a problem. Let's go ahead and fix that, hopefully. There we go. Just needed to add self. Let's go ahead and run it again. And we'll say choose picture. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say photo library. And let's see if it actually fires up something. Okay, there we go. That's it's actually my photo library. And now I can select an image, so I can select an image. So I'm clicking on it and it's not really doing anything. Once you click on these images, it should close and take this image and show me the image instead of the placeholder, instead of this person. So we need to figure out how to close it, all right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and jump into image picker, the one that we just created. And inside the image picker, we can go ahead, I know it, it, at this time you might say, okay, hold on, you can use the environment variable is presented. Yeah, 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 but I'm just gonna use a different property, okay? Binding var 
is shown and I will use a Boolean property. Okay. And when I'm using the image picker coordinator, this one, I am actually going to go ahead and pass is shown, is shown. And the image picker coordinator doesn't really care about it's shown, so let's go ahead and update that also. And we are going to go ahead and create another property over here, which will be a binding property. Bar is shown, which is Boolean. All right. I think this is shown property, even the image property, you can use it like an environment variable, but then you'll have to decide that the environment variable, environment variables or environment objects, should they contain these things or not. All right. Is shown equals to is shown. And now we can go over here. Uh, what's going on over here? Let's see. Okay, here we go is shown, which is a bindable of Boolean property. And finally, we're going to make sure that when we actually select the image, we can go ahead and say is shown equals to false. And not only that, but when we say did cancel, we can go ahead and say is shown equals to false. Let's go ahead and build that. And for some reason it failed. Let's go ahead and find out where and why it is failing. Let's see. Maybe I'm just missing one parameter or something. Okay, missing parameter. Uh, there we go. Uh, what are we, do we have anything over here? Okay, so we don't really have anything in the content view. So let's see. What do we pass in the content view over here? Uh, okay, do we have anything called show image picker? Okay, so we do have that. Yeah, so we're going to pass that. So self dot show image picker. Let's go ahead and build it. Great. And let's go ahead and run this. Okay, we're going to say choose picture, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to select the photo library. Because I'm running on the simulator, I can't really access the camera anyways and I can select this picture, but it doesn't really display over here. So that's not good. So we need to display the picture right over here. Okay, so we know that it has to be this part, the placeholder is always displaying the placeholder image. Maybe we can replace it with something. So maybe we can say over here, UI image, and use the image, which is at the top of line number 17, or else use the UI image, and named will be place holder and use that. So either use the UI image, the one, well, the image that we have added or assigned, or use the placeholder. Now let's go ahead and run the application again. And I'm going to say choose picture, photo library is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and select this waterfall. And there we go. So we were just able to select the picture from the photo library. Now, obviously, if I go ahead and run this application and choose camera, then it's just going to blow up because you can't really access the camera when you are running it on the simulator. But if you try to run this application on your actual device, then it will run. So let me go ahead and get my actual device and we should be able to run this app. You may have to do some settings on your actual device that, that you allow the permission to the camera, but let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so I have actually, hold on, here we go. I have actually plugged in the phone. This is my actual phone. Uh, let's go ahead and try to run the application. You will see some error because I haven't really configured that you can uh, select the photo or you have the permission. I'm gonna select camera and immediately it uh, crashes the app. So basically it is saying that blah, 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 some sort of a security setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add NS camera usage description. So let's in the info.plist file. Let's go ahead and add that. And you can write over here that this app requires uh, usage of camera to function properly or something like that, All right? Okay, great, let's go 
to this again and give it a try again. And let's see if we can see our camera. This time I'm going to click on choose picture. I'm going to select camera and I'm going to select OK. And you can't really see that much. I mean, you know, let me try to use the camera. The problem is that my wire is super small and it's going to mess up obviously. Here is a picture of, oh no. Oh yeah, oops, oops. you can see that. Uh, the big boss man, let's go ahead and take a picture of big boss man. Oh, immediately you can see some problems going on. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to show you that, but you can see that the picture does appear. So definitely it is working. All right, and this is the actual phone. There we go. I know it crashed like 10,000 times. Uh, it's just my wire and my phone is pretty old actually. So that's why it had to do a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, the wire is very small, the, the, the one that I have, uh, but it is definitely working. All right, and here is the proof. Big boss man. All right, let's see if I can do it again. Choose picture, camera. Please, big boss man, please. Oh no, here we go, big boss man. Take a picture, use photo. Boom, that's it. You can see it's working, right? All right, that is pretty much it. Uh, I really hope that you have you like this uh, video, all right? And uh, sorry about all the stuff that's going on with my phone. I really need to buy a new phone and a new charger and a lot of other stuff. But uh, looks like it's working fine. And you can download the code from uh, GitHub, all the code uh, from GitHub. And one more thing, if you need to learn more about Swift UI, then I have a perfect course for you. That course is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. And you can get it from Udemy. You can see that I have around 2,600 plus students. And this is the best selling course on Swift UI with more than 14 hours of on demand video. We're going to start from the very beginning about learning about creating and combining views, building lists and navigation building the grid layout, understanding state and binding. They're gonna learn about the MVVM design pattern. Uh, also a complete app for ordering coffee, which is integrated with Web API. You're also going to learn about integrating core data with Swift UI integrated core ML machine learning and Swift UI on all devices. And then guess what? We are going to create the complete Apple stocks application. The stocks application that you see on your phone, we're gonna complete it. We're going to make it in Sufi UI. That's so cool. Now, the best way to get this course is by checking out the link in the YouTube description. Click on the link and get the course. But please, please, please do use the link because if you use the link, well, you get the best deal and I get to keep a little bit higher revenue. But you know what? You get the best deal. That's the important part. Uh, thank you so much. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Sorry about the stuff that was going on with my phone, but uh, you saw it is working and everything is working correctly. And if you have any comments, go to the comment section, write the comments. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I will keep on posting these kind of videos. So you will get a notification whenever I post something. All right. Thank you so much.